All right. Yeah, certainly. Yeah. All right, let's move on. So like, subscribe, follow. Let us know what you guys think in the comments below, and we'll be happy to follow up on this one and give you more information. Okay, so leading into the next discussion, which is going to bring up the last discussion of the day, uh, something popped up today on, on one of the sites that we, we go to, which is uh, SUSS News, uh, which, I don't know, to me, it was just kind of interesting because it says, Paragon VTOL, uh, Aerospace announces a partnership making Brownsville a leader in vertical launch technology. Uh, something caught my eye. It was said Paragon VTOL Airspace, a lead innovator in vertical takeoff and landing technology. VTOL, obviously, <clears throat> uh, released a, a press statement basically saying that, hey, here we go. We're, we're, we're going to go ahead and develop a, a partnership with Rolls-Royce, SNC Electric, uh, ARUP, and Texas Southernmost College, the city of Brownsville, and Greater Brownsville Incentives Corporation. And it uh, looks like these guys are getting ready to go ahead and commit towards starting a partnership there to start. I guess lay ground for their uh, for their new facilities. So it was just one of those things where I kind of said, "Well, uh, all right, that's interesting enough. Uh, let's take a look a little bit more, at maybe what Paragon offers by the numbers." And if you go to their website, I, I ha we hadn't seen anything from this company before, so it was just interesting to take a look. Yep. Uh, this is their their entry, which is basically being called the, the Paragon Soar. Yep. Um, oddly enough. It looks like a cross between uh, multiple de designs that we've seen here on on the show before. Uh, it looks like it's going with a hybrid blade structure, which is basically some sort of large blade structure and then a, a Lilium-esque smaller, um, almost nested baby motor structure to offset some of their thrust. And they're talking about different levels of propulsion, meaning that there's some sort of 70 decibel engine on board. Um, so it's it's quite a unique perspective and a, and a different take on the urban EV toll market. And and even more so, uh, their Paragon Soar, which we just looked at some video for. The, the thing is, I'm, I'm kind of questioning where they get this idea that they are a leader currently in this space. Because, ironically enough, they, they say that their estimated delivery is 2024 contingent upon FAA, EASA, and CAA approval. And that a full-scale validation testing will start in 2022. Two, uh, they're saying it has proprietary carbon fiber construction, a frost-resistant airframe, hybrid electric propulsion. Again, the 70 decibel engine, 500 horsepower electric motor per ducted unit, yep. and a five-passenger plus pilot. A yeah, interesting. And micro propellers to reduce a noise during takeoff and landing, 500 mile range. And then it says the photo is a rendering of an actual VTOL under development. Final version will be based on the FAA approval airframe which may alter uh, the commercial ready vessel, uh, so VTOL. So, hey, it's kind of an interesting concept. They do have another one on here, which is called the Paragon Soar Ambulance, <clears throat> which obviously is going to be their entrance into the EMS world, which is someplace right now where helicopters enjoy pretty much dominance in that industry for servicing the air ambulance sector. But it is a place that we anticipate that, e you know, VTOLs will go eventually in the future. It just makes natural sense. Uh, so um, with that, Corey, what's what's your feelings on this one? Um, it's always interesting to find new uh, companies doing different things. Uh, as Mike said, we hadn't we hadn't we hadn't not heard about or I had not heard about Paragon Air Aerospace. So we stumbled across talking about this article, a show, and it's uh, I I don't uh, mean to sound like the same thing I always say, but I like to know more. I'd like to know more. Um, you know, I, it says a hybrid hybrid electric propulsion system. It mentions a seventy decibel engine. I don't. Uh, so I guess that's their their. Uh, well, I guess it's the power plant for. I mean, it mentions hybrid electric, so it's not fully electric. Obviously, it says hybrid electric. So does mm -hmm. that mean we're looking at something that would run the main engine? This is maybe maybe a small turbine or something, an APU for Possibly, yeah for takeoff. You know, high high. Uh, well, I mean, it would make more noise then, would you think, if it was... A little bit. I don't know. Maybe they use the electric part to take off and land and then use the, the quote, more noisy engine uh, at, at altitude. I don't really know. I'd, I'd like to know more, um, you know, speeds and endurance, as we always talk about airplanes, and aerial vehicles. What's the endurance? Mm -hmm. um, it does, of course, mention estimated delivery 2024, obviously continues on some certification procedures. Uh, they do mention FA. They do mention EASA. They do Mm -hmm. so they're looking to go international right so this is this is while they say going into brownsville 
uh, for this main article, you know, there's 50, 50 aircraft of theirs going into Brownsville. They are looking to go international. Mm-hmm. Um, Wait. I don't know. I mean, uh, so this design, for me, though. I feel like this is a lot of, there's a lot of rotating components. Yeah, so that's what I'm, um, I'm trying to figure out here, because here... My if... guess would be that... Because remember, anything that spins faster and has a higher tip speed will make more noise. Yeah. So maybe they're planning on using these eight. Are th- are those uh, those larger? Are those larger drones? Those, like, one on top, one on bottom? Are those doubles, you know? Double stack? Really, can you I, tell? Honestly, I really can't. They're double stack. They might um, be double stack. Because of the double stack, you might like be able to get away with the spinning them a bit slower. And since there's eight, which is which is significant, maybe you can uh, reduce might noise. Be, it might those. be double stack. Could be double stack. Um, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, you know, obviously, just speculation here. So he, so here's yeah. my thing, right? So they're they're going after obviously the, the the clean design of just you know big bladed system, um, and then they're going out with these other ones that are over the wings. So I guess in forward flight, these wings will produce additional lift. But the difference is they've got these embedded micros, which uh, they're they're quite an interesting design. A banks of seven, seven or so. But my first question is, how are you going to get in and out of the thing? Um, oh, uh, hmm. that's going to be real interesting because you're going to have to walk over the wings or you're only going to be able to ingress or egress from the front of the aircraft with some sort of door opening. I hadn't thought of that. That's, that's going to be pretty difficult for number one. How are you going to get it out? Number two. Uh, the last thing that, that I'll say, which is going to kick off into our direct next conversation, is I don't know how that's really going to respond to air mass because that tail, the way that that sits in forward flight, will be stability, but a lot of that other surface area is going to be very reactive towards clouds and and lifting air masses, and that's a lot of stuff to be pushed up and down against. So I'm not sure how smooth their ride is going to be. I'm I don't just know. Saying. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, uh, could be it's, interesting. It's got. It says it's a six passenger size so mm-hmm. uh it wingspan wise it looks fairly large right um you know and i know we keep comparing stuff to like jet up terra but jet up terra at least looks like a small footprint sure although you could imagine again this is a UAM, you know urban air mobility uh application right so still probably looking to go in existing heliports and uh, other places like that so it probably would still fit on existing pads but anything of a significant size again i don't know you know you know we're always look again i talk about endurance we talk about weight i talk about what kind of batteries got on board um but yeah i am just a bit uh I just like to... yeah it, it's something to take a look at because again when these when these companies at you know announce big s packs where there's going to be big money involved again we know that this market is looking you know basically it's the flying car market and we know that people are hot to get in on it but the question is is there any real money in this particular venture because with all the other designs out there this play, this this marketplace is getting crowded. Mm-hmm. Okay, getting real crowded. So it just it's worth noting. So like, subscribe, follow. Let us know what you think, and we're gonna get more information on them if we can. But this leads us to the final.